Mein Name ist Guido Stahlmann, leite die Kommunikation der DTM. Die meisten von Ihnen kennen mich. Ich äh, darf mich äh, bedanken für die reichhaltige äh, Teilnahme, trotz der kurzfristigen Einladung. Wir hatten äh, entschieden, wir werden die Pressekonferenz in Englisch machen. Ich wollte nur kurz die einleitenden Worte in Deutsch machen, wir, weil wir es auch live streamen und natürlich auch die internationalen Fans gerne hören möchten, ähm, was wir hier zu verkünden haben. Die Verkündung ist gestern Abend schon erfolgt, respektive heute Morgen mit dem Kalender. Und ähm, I will now switch to English in order to introduce the two um, protagonists we have on stage today. Gerhard Berger, Chairman of the uh, DTM organization ITR and Dr. Florian Kamelga, founder and um, CEO of um, AF Racing AG and team principal of the new Aston Martin-based team um, in DTM. Uh, I would like to hand over now to my colleague Wolfgang Schattling, who will ask the questions and will start the conversation. Thanks very much. Thank you, Guido. So, yeah, a very warm welcome on behalf of our motorsport from my side. My name is Wolfgang Schattling, has already been introduced, and I think that uh, many of you know me already, but not in this function. This is a new one because I've started a new uh, career and I'm very glad to be associated to a team like R Motorsport or a company like AF Racing AG who are um, entering Aston Martin racing cars in the DTM. And I want to start my question to Gerhard and then afterwards to Florian. Gerhard, it must be a big relief. It's the end of the season. We have normally a uh, press conference with a review but we have now a press conference with a preview, and the preview looks very optimistic. What do you think? First, good morning. Secondly, as it is the last race, I couldn't say thank you to all of you supporting us over the whole year. We had a great year again. We had shown our fans good sport. We have, uh, I think, improved the series again, step by step. And uh, we are looking forward for a great uh, final event. Championship still is still open. And uh, so I think uh, a lot of fans will come and see this race and see what the outcome finally of TTM 2018 going to be. Uh, it looks like a lot of people are coming this weekend. I think uh, the, sales, the, uh, the ticket sales is uh, running extremely well. Uh, and I think the TTM has a very strong momentum, built up a very strong momentum over this year. But the highlight of this momentum, I would say, is today to tell you that we fill the gap uh, in our start field for the future. And uh, Aston Martin gonna, uh, confirmed yesterday uh, to be part of our family in the future. And uh, I'm extremely happy and extremely proud that we, we could find an agreement with uh, such a luxury brand, what add a lot of extra value to our platform. And um, thanks to everybody what was involved in it. And um, I hope you see it in the same way than us, that this is a clear sign for the future of the platform TTM. Thank you, Gerhard. A question now to Florian Kamelge. Florian, um, I think we have some uh, weeks of hard work behind us, especially you. But um, as uh, Gerhard mentioned, this is a new construct uh, which is called AF Racing AG. We have our motorsport as the uh, enter team. We have a brand like Aston Martin. Could you give us some insight in what this is all about? How does it work together, please? Good morning also from my side. Our Motorsport is the brand of our company AF Racing AG. And AF Racing AG is a strategic partner in the project Valkyrie, which is partnering Aston Martin, Lagonda, Red Bull Racing and AF Racing. And this is where our relation mostly comes from. A second a second explanation for our relation is we are a Swiss Aston Martin dealer with Aston Martin St. Gallen and since eight years and that's where the relation comes from as well. Um, 
Now, Aston Martin runs their professional race things through different partners. One is WEC, which they run successfully with ProDrive. One is their engagement in Formula One and on the Red Bull racing car. And one is obviously the entering DTM, which we are very, very proud of. First of all, thank you, Gerhard, uh, for your words. We are very proud to be part of that family now. And we are very proud of the fact that Aston Martin trusts us and brings us as the team who will run Aston Martin Silhouette Cars in DTM. I think this, this explains the, contract, the construct a bit. Thank you, Florian. Uh, Gerhard, a question to you. Um, we mentioned in the R Motorsport press release that the internationalization is one of the main reasons for entering the DTM as an international top series. Can you tell us a little bit more about the internationalization, how it worked so far and what the uh, prospects are? Well, the word internalization is, uh, is uh, very wide because I remember well when it came onto the table when I started uh, my, my role um, and uh, you start to think about it. The first uh, uh, definition is always calendar internalization. Huh? You go racing in Germany or you go racing to Italy or you go racing to China or you go racing worldwide, European wide or German wide. But that's just one part of it and that's just coming basically later. The base of everything is to have regulations set in different continents in the same way because that's the only way that manufacturers can participate with one development budget. So one time the car is developed under certain regulation, it's in-house, and then you can start to think about it, where you bring your cars, where is your important markets, you, you, you like to be... In, in Germany, or you not like to be in Germany, can you use the same regulation in Japan or wherever? Uh, so we started on this side, and it was clear that um, we, we, what we have to do is to, to convince our existing partners in Japan, who are running already close to our regulation, licensed power of our regulation, to develop them and, and step by step bring them in a stage that they are having the same regulation than us. This was a hard process over 12 months, negotiate, discussion, and you can believe it's the difficulty is not the willingness, the difficulty is that you are facing a different culture, also a different racing culture. I mean, is it different if you have sprint racing wheel to wheel as we have it and as our European fans need it and want it? Or you have a long distance race where you change drivers, where you have to refuel, where you end and end. So we, we had to do a couple of compromises, but finally, as uh, you remember well on Norris Ring, we've been on a stage that we could say, well, in general, we have a clear line. We, we want until 2020 uh, have a common regulation between Japan and Europe. Uh, we name it in an internal title as class one, whatever, whatever it's going to be. Uh, but it's still a process what's going on, but we are on a, on a good way and we are, and I would say we are close to say, well, we can go in different continents with the different car, with the same cars or with the same development. And, and that's the base for everything. Once we have this regulation clear done, and I think it's, it's done in 2020, We're going to face in 2019 a little bit of compromise, but it's done already by, I would say, 85%. But from 2020 on, uh, we have common races on the same regulation in, in Japan and as in, in Europe. Thank you, Gerhard. Florian, just the topic internationalization from your side. I think it's one of the important reasons that Aston Martin, with you, entered the series. Absolutely. Uh, internationalization is one of the base points of the negotiations with uh, Gerhard and the ITR for our, for our entry. Since being a, uh, uh, as with Aston Martin, a, a British brand, internationalization is very important. I have to say in this respect also that I think uh, DTM has done a fantastic job over the last couple of months to, to go into this direction. And... Uh, For us and for the brand, it is very important to not uh, just work 
in the same market that we are right now, but to, to go further to talk about Japan. Japan is a country where uh, motorsport is a very, has a very, very high standard for the fans, and it is also a good market and an important market for Aston Martin. Thank you, Florian. Gerhard, another topic that's interesting. Just, just, yeah, please, because if you want to reply. talk about the internalization calendar or regulation, and another important part was, and that's why I'm so happy that we are sitting here together with Aston Martin, is to, to, to include in our family also brands outside of Germany. So, yes, Aston Martin is, is a great super luxury brand, but also it's, it's the first brand from coming from outside of Germany. So, also from on this side, we have done a step forward. That's a real debut, international debut. Um, Gerd, another question about the uh, cost reductions. Uh, we discuss it in every racing category at the moment, starting in Formula One and also especially in DTM. Can you tell us a little bit more about what has already been done with that regard and uh, maybe what can be done more in the future? Because this is also uh, a topic that interests Aston Martin. Well, cost reduction is an ongoing process and it most probably will never stop. But I think the base of to have a championship on this quality, on this high level, um, and being still cost efficient, the base is the unipart system, what TTM has. It's a fantastic system, um, developed over many years by Mercedes, uh, Audi, BMW. It guarantees you that you're having a, a, a competitive run with not big difference on performance, what gives you a good show, what gives you a good racing, and, and at the same time, what gives the advantage that development costs not running out of control. And uh, we are increasing this, this unit part system step by step, year by year. Uh, of course, in the end, there has to be a window where manufacturers can play their own muscles, can play their own uh, uh, resources or play their own knowledge, but it has to be limited. Otherwise, you will end up on a cost level where you're never going to fulfill a, a, a proper return of investment. And I think on this side, we are extremely good already. I think you, you, would, you, you will not have any chance or you will not see such high level racing with such costs in any other category. And, uh, but I still see potential to improve and we're still going to look in, 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 in a couple of more items in the future to, to increase this ratio or to improve the, the, the return of investment. But I think we are already on a very good stage. Maybe you want to add something, Florian? Yes, please. For, for us, as our motorsport, we are entrepreneurs. And we will run the whole, the whole uh, series with our joint venture, together with our partner, HWA, in the joint venture. And there we are entrepreneurs as well. So for us, the cost, discussion about cost is very, very important. And I think we are a bit pioneering at the moment uh, into DTM that, it might be a beginning of, a, of teams being involved in these decisions uh, more than the brand behind. Um, as entrepreneurs, we have to calculate and as entrepreneurs, we have to, at the end, uh, uh, work properly for it uh, um, and not just have a budget on hands. And this brings it a bit differently into the game, I think. Thank you, Florian. Gerd, another question. Uh, how and when did the whole thing start? When did you meet Florian and his co-owner, partner, Andreas, Andreas Benziger, for the first time, under which circumstances, how did it all develop? Well, it was quite simple. I mean, the, after Mercedes stopped, the challenge was uh, who, who could come in and who is premium? And in the next round, they say, who is the best of premium? And, and Aston Martin came into my mind. And I said, who, who has the contacts to Aston Martin? And I, and I met uh, Christian Horner 
uh, for another reason, and I say, Christian, uh, with who you are dealing in Aston Martin, because you are doing the Valkyrie project at the moment, you are very deep involved with uh, somebody there. Let me know who is who is the decision makers, who is uh, who is the guys, but uh, moving something. And he says to me, well, you have to go to Andreas and to Florian. These are the two guys. What are inside Aston Martin and together with Master Martin are moving things. And I contacted them and we started the discussion, I would say, six months ago. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, another question to um, Florian. Um, there is some speculation uh, in some of the media, or there was some, that Mercedes was in one way or the other involved in uh, developing this project. Uh, what can you tell us about this? There is two points to say to that. Uh, first, as you know, we, we uh, will incorporate a joint venture company with our partner HWA. And Mercedes helped a lot in the first discussions about this joint venture, which we are really thankful about. Mercedes has nothing to do and is not around in this respect uh, for the program itself. The program itself is run, is controlled by AF Racing, who has a license from Aston Martin Lagonda for running the DTM program for them. And they heavily support this. We will run race ops, development of the cars, etc., through our joint venture with HWA. Uh, and Mercedes has nothing to do with that. Interesting to know, thank you. Um, Gerhard, uh, is there a, um, a fixed figure of how many cars have to be entered by a new manufacturer coming into DTM? Because that uh, concerns what Florian has to uh, be responsible of. And then the question to Floria, do you, Florian, do you already know how many cars you will uh, uh, start the DTM with? First, Gerhard. Well, in general, as more cars, as better it is, <laughs> as it's always in motorsport. But no, I, I think uh, at the stage, we are extremely happy to announce that Aston Martin is our partner for the future. Then we are even more extra, uh, happy to, to know now that we are already starting in 2019. And... Uh, the answer of this question, I think Florian can do better. He knows better when he's going to bring how many cars. Okay, Florian. It will meet. Only would like to have 12 cars, correct? Yeah, I know <laughs> that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> In the midterm, it will be four cars. Um, it uh, depends, obviously, on the development stage of the cars, etc. So. Uh, I would say in the midterm it's four cars, uh, and I would not go further in this at the moment. Additional question, do you know, we talked about entering in uh, 2019, do you already know when in 2019 you intend to enter the DTM? As you say, it will be in 2019, and uh, we will inform uh, when we are ready. It depends a lot on development. It depends obviously a lot on uh, test possibilities of the cars. We want to be prepared. Uh, we are certainly aiming for good results. That's why we will enter uh, when we think we're ready. Following up question and final question also to Florian. Do you already know which drivers you want to run in the DTM? We will explore that. We have our ideas. Yeah, had one, sir. <laughs> Congratulations, Gerhard, by the way. This is the this is the day this is the day thirty <laughs> This is the day thirty two years after his first Formula One win. Thank Congratulations you. to that. <laughs> Thank you. Um yeah we will obviously we will explore that. We have a couple of people in, in our mind and uh, we will inform at a later stage. Okay, if, if there are no additional remarks, I want to hand over now to you colleagues from the media to ask questions. We have a roving micro, here you see my colleague on my left. And uh, please ask your question to Gerd Berger or Florian Kamelger if there are any.
Okay, Ferret Wagner, Rheinzeitung. A question to both of you. Uh, did Helmut Marko and did Red Bull play any role in uh, the decision to step into DTM in 2019? Helmut, uh, Helmut was a help to bring the discussions going and to bring us closer together. Uh, hence the first meeting we had with Gerhard and his team was in Graz. So uh, we are really thankful uh, to Helmut to, to, to get, get the ball rolling, yes. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention before, I mean, uh, the, 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 I, I got from, from Christian the, the, the names and, and, and the first contact, but then the first discussion started together with Helmut. And uh, as Florian said, we met first time in Graz with Helmut, and he was helping to put things together. Next question. Uh, Jens Botha, Racing Blog. A uh, quick question about the engine. Can you perhaps share some information? Because there was a lot of speculation in the recent months uh, when the first rumors appeared that Aston Martin might join DTM. Uh, there was talks about Red Bull involvement. Uh, there was talks about a former Mercedes engine. There was talks about an HWA in-house development and even talks about a possible engine from the Japanese uh, Super GT series. You seem to know more than myself. Um, it will be, it will be a bespoke engine done by our joint venture with HWA. Next question, please. There are none. Okay, then I want to say thank you on behalf of our motorsport to joining us. And I think uh, you want to say, Guido, you want to say how the proceedings are going on now. Well, we are doing a photo now. We remove the tables and uh, the information for the photographers that we uh, take pictures with uh, the two of them on stage. After the, afterwards, we do uh, TV interviews in the, round, uh, in the room next door. Thank you. Okay.